Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Conscious Leadership Series with Shiftco. Shiftco is a platform for conscious entrepreneurs and business owners. So we develop um, business development tools as well as leadership tools and coaching to help you launch or grow your business. My name is Josh Tan. I'm based out of New York. I'm one of the New York leaders of Shiftco. It's really great to see you. Today on the Conscious Leadership Series, we have Abby Stason. Abby Stason is one of Shiftco's master teachers. She is also an activist and a skill builder. She has over 20 years of experience as an integrative leader, organizational consultant, and group facilitator. She helps human beings, leaders, teams, and organizations wake up by equipping them with behavioral practices for a modern world. And today, Abby will be speaking to us about appreciating style diversity. Thank you, Abby, for being here. Thank you. Thank you for that thorough introduction. Yeah, so so Patricia, Emily, and Andy, Claire? Claire, is it? Raise it's your Claire, hand. sorry. It's Claire, Claire sorry, no, yeah. that's, I guess why I got it. <laughs> no problem. Are, are the three, raise your hand if you're a member of Shiftco yet. Are you members of Shiftco? Okay, great. Yeah, just curious. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, Josh and I are sharing hosting. Let me get this rolling. Okay, so welcome here. It's really good to see you. I'm super passionate about conscious leadership, as you'll see, and um, and love being a member of Shiftco. It's just a great um, venue for conscious leadership. So. This, this part of the series has to do with style preferences. So if you're like me, you want smooth collaboration in your day to day. And I'm amazed at how much we missed each other just because we have style preferences. Like even on the best of teams where we like and respect each other, styles clash. And for entrepreneurs, it's really an opportunity to recognize what may be keeping you from your potential. So when we raise our consciousness and bring more awareness to our preferences, we can exercise different muscles and learn from each other. So this has to do with conditioning. Conditioning is useful, but if left unbridled, we really can't meet the demands of the world today, of a global economy. And part of what's conditioned in us is how we like to interact with the world, like how we like to get things done like literally process our day to day. So one of the core aspects of conscious leaders now is that they're awake to themselves and they're attuned to their conditioning, their style preferences, and they have a commitment to presence as a baseline. Awakened minds spark the invitation to presence, and it's through presence that we can overcome the inertia of conditioning and experience more agility. And then with awareness, and this comes agility and this constant loop of learning, I call it. So conscious leadership or conscious behavior, being a conscious human being is really this intersection between awareness and impact. How aware am I of myself? and my impact on others in my environment. And that in turn keeps me learning. And if you've been on my other webinars and there are other webinars on the Shiftco YouTube channel, all these are recorded. So I highly recommend you go to them. But if you've seen them or get to, gotten to know me and Josh, you're getting to know me, I'm very rubber meets the road. So <laughs> this is just another opportunity for us to move beyond buzzwords and into embodiment. And to be conscious in the world today, we have to develop ourselves because in the absence of conscious activities, our underdeveloped unconscious ego will take over. So what is again required us is to move beyond these buzzwords and into embodiment through a series of practices or skills, if you will. That's why I call myself a skill builder and master teacher. Recognizing style preferences requires practice. It requires our attention. And navigating the human condition and relating to in, in the world requires skill and mastery. And just like any other skill, re, uh, navigating style preferences is a place where we have to dedicate effort and energy. Okay, so that's nice and all, but what do I mean by that? 
So we, we all focus a lot on what we do. Keep doing that. I'm not saying don't focus on what we do, you know, building a business, closing clients and all that. That's super important. We want to keep th getting things done. The opportunity for us is to recognize how we like to do things. We all prefer to actually do things a little differently. And I'm getting us a bit into the weeds here. This really has to do with how do I tactically engage the world? How do I process things? Because our values and strengths equal what we prefer to do. Style preferences equals how we prefer to do it. And the what plus the how equals impact, contribution, and fulfillment. And the how is typically what we forget to look at that can keep us stuck. And these are our style preferences. I'm going to go over a few in a, in a few minutes, a second, actually. So styles aren't, style preferences aren't good or bad. They just are. And again, what I'm really talking about is overcoming the inertia of conditioning. So let's get right to the punchline here. Presence should dictate how I show up, not, my, and not any of my conditioning. And by presence, I mean a situation. So if I'm going to meet a situation, my conditioning shouldn't take over. That's useful sometimes, but in this world today, when you're starting a business, running a business, leading a team, an entrepreneur, we really have to have more agility. So really mastery is to stop, get present and ask, what's the situation and what's required of me right now? How do I need to behave? What do I tactically need to do? And for this, we can recognize any style preferences. So this is a busy slide. Don't get overwhelmed by it. <laughs> so there are many different style preferences. This is not a comprehensive list. And I'm not gonna, well, I'm not gonna sit here and go through all of these, but like for instance, some people are diagnostic reasoners, some are analytical. I know I'm diagnostic. Some people are spatial, tangible, non-spatial. I know I'm non-spatial, prefer now. This is where my conditioning comes in. Abstract, concrete, I'm more abstract. I mean, some of us have, or all of us have different learning styles. So if I'm a visual and kinesthetic learner, I cannot do books on tape and grok it. It's, it's not good or bad. It's that if I, have, if I have to learn something, I'm gonna do better with reading it, seeing it visually, reading, whiteboarding, or I'm going to dive in, you know, be kinesthetic. Let me get in there. Let me screw it up. And then I learn that way. So as a, as a coach and consultant, if I have an auditory learner, I have to stop and make sure I speak more and allow more time for them to speak. Then there's introversion, extroversion. We're going to go over some of these. So I'm not going to um, spend a lot of time on these here and go over these individually. But now I'll enter then diagnostic tools, right? So we, we all love to take a test and have a report spew out for us. Diagnostic tools are very, very useful. And silence and validity is very important and necessary. But you really don't have to go and take a test to recognize any of this. It, you can just take any framework and apply it to your, to your direct experience without taking a test. In fact, the shortfall in a lot of really good diagnostic tools is people see it and say, okay, I'm the color blue, or I'm an introvert, or um, what are some of the, you know, Enneagram, I'm an Enneagram one, right? And then we're just, okay, here I am, but then we don't really implement it. So any framework without um, comparing it to your direct experience is really just another framework. So the key question is, what are, what are behaviors associated with any of my results? And it's in the investigation of our behavior we experience real learning, growth, and development. So your first takeaway is what are any of my style preferences and how do they get in the way of my agility? And again, I'm going to go in a few, uh, a few right here, but it's like any of these, we have to overcome the inertia of conditioning to be able to flex in the moment. Let's go into a few here specifically. And these are, these are a few that I find um, are most urgent to be aware of and most relevant in the day-to-day. -day. As, you, as you're starting to see, maybe I'm very 
rubber meets the road, right? So the first one has to do with how does your energy flow? How do you recharge? So this is the introvert extrovert uh, dichotomy, okay? Introverts, um, introverts get their energy internally, extroverts get their energy externally. One of the big misnomers that introverts are uh, not good with people and extroverts are. So it's really good to get clear about this. But as entrepreneurs and people in general, look, all of us, it's really important in this day and age, I find it to be that we really understand and know our preference for recharging, okay? And how our energy flows. Now, if you're an entrepreneur and you're a solopreneur like I am, I've got to manage my energy because I'm a solopreneur, right? So I've got to make sure I have energy for certain things and recognize when my energy doesn't flow. So let me just read to you some things about extroversion and introversion. <clears throat> so in the introverted attitude, energy is drawn from the environment towards inner experience and reflection. One desires to stay focused on the internal subjective state to affirm its value and to maintain this focus if possible. The main interests of the introverted type are the world of concepts, ideas, and inner experiences. Persons habitually taking the introverted attitude may develop some or all of the characteristics associated with introversion. So interest in the clarity of concepts, ideas, and recollected experience. Reliance on enduring concepts and experience more than on transitory external events or fleeting ideas. A thoughtful contemplative detachment. An enjoyment of solitude and privacy and a desire to think things out before talking them out. So that's an introverted uh, um, preference. I happen to be, have a preference for introversion off the charts. So silent retreat for me is like a holiday. So let's read about extroversion now. In an extroverted attitude, energy and intention flow out, are drawn out to the objects and people in the environment. The individual experience a desire to act on the environment to affirm its importance, to increase its effect. Persons habitually taking the extroverted attitude may develop some or all the characteristics such as awareness of and reliance on the environment for stimulation and guidance, an, eager, an eagerness to interact with the outer world, an action-oriented, sometimes impulsive way of meeting life, openness to new experience, ease of communication and sociability, and a desire to talk things out. So if you, you see, this is really important to understand where does your energy flow? Do you get energy from Times Square, <laughs> right? Which is my nightmare. Or do you get energy from solitude in the woods, which is my heaven? It's not good, bad, or right, wrong. But now if you're an entrepreneur leading a team, Heck, we're just always interacting with people where it's crowded on the planet now. You have to become masters of the recharge and knowing how you recharge. So Times Square, for someone who has a preference for extroverted, is going to be a recharge. For me, it's quiet. Yeah, shaking your right? So it's shaking. So for me, it's quiet in the woods. I come out from being quiet. I'm great. That exhausts an extrovert just as Times Square exhausts me. Again, there's no good, bad, right, wrong here. But this is an important one, you know, because this uh, shift code is more geared towards entrepreneurs, you know, smaller businesses and building their business. So this is really important if you're, especially for me as a solopreneur and getting out, I have to make sure I become a master of a recharge. Now for the extroverts during COVID and working from home and always on Zoom now, Make sure you get out right from behind your desk. So that's the introversion extroversion one. Let's talk about another one. Are, do you have a strong memory for details of both past and present practicality? 
Or do you have a preference or a propensity for details or big picture, picture relationships by way of insights? Again, no good, bad, right, wrong. But I know I have a strong propensity for big picture thinking. In fact, when I had teams, they would, we, we got to a, a system where they would say, okay, you're at 100,000 feet. We need to know what to do on this task. I would say, okay. So I would come back down into the details. As a solopreneur now, I do my own bookkeeping. Look, I don't have a huge business I can hammer it out, but I have to put blinders on for two hours, play, pay close attention to it because getting into the details actually exhausts me and I'm not very good at it, but I can get it done. So I have to bring all my attention to it. And if you're detail-oriented, great, you know, but are you looking at the big picture? Can you vision out what's next for you as a solopreneur? And let's take a look at this, because really, if you think about anything, it matters for what stage you are in your business or a project, anything, you know, some phase of your business. Are you in vision, mission, strategy, tactics, or execution? So for me, I just love being up in vision and mission. I just want to change consciousness in the world. And I want to bring all these skills to everybody. Okay, that's nice and all, but Abby, what are you going to do in terms of tactics and execution for that? So I'm actually bringing a lot of structure and detail to my day-to-day -day because I'm actually building out online courses. So that just goes against and pushes against my big picture thinking. So I'm like, get into the details. So I really calendar my day, I schedule time. And I support myself there, knowing that I have to come off of my conditioning to be a big picture thinker. And then here's one too. Uh, and actually, let me, let me go back here. Uh, this is from the Myers-Briggs actually. So this is uh, details versus big picture. If you ever take the Myers-Briggs, that's S versus N on that. Um, see, again, you don't really know, have to know the report, but this is sensate or intuitive type. And then closed-ended versus open-ended is J, judging or perceiving on the Myers-Briggs. But again, it doesn't matter if you take the report. You can say, am I closed-ended? I have a preference for closed-ended versus open-ended. Now, closed-ended means I like to bring things to closure, right? So I'm going to have a list. I'm going to check it off. I'm going to get a lot of things done. Open-ended, which I happen to be very open-ended, a strong preference for open-endedness, so I, if I had it my way, I'd start a million companies and a million things and never finish anything. And I would live life to its fullest. Now, in a world of doing and, you know, getting things done, including like cleaning the house, you know, planting meals and all that, if I left everything open-ended, my life would be extremely chaotic. But, and if you're a solopreneur and an entrepreneur, it's important to know how, if you're open-ended or closed-ended because too much open-endedness, I won't be able to get courses done. I'll just leave them all open. I won't launch anything. Being too closed-ended also, I could um, leave out, I could be so busy closing things out that I miss some additional information. So it's like no good, bad, right, wrong. And this is the, this, the closed-ended versus open-ended one is the, the term paper thing. So I used to you know, cram the night before for term papers, right? Wait till the last second. And then closed-ended people would start studying a week before. It's no good, bad, right, wrong. However, does, how does that impact your business and your ability to get things done and check it out? And then particularly when working on teams now, and that, this one causes a lot of frustration because I'm waiting to the last second or I don't miss, I don't keep deadlines and clear agreements. I've actually had a colleague that I worked with that was very close-ended and, and we would make clear agreements. Let's do Friday at five. Well, I'm not going to start it even till Thursday night or Friday morning. And she would constantly say, well, why haven't you started that yet? I'm like, well, that's not due till Friday. You know, so, but see how that can cause stress if we don't hit our deadlines. So this is one that causes a lot of um, conflict in teams and, and between relationships, mm. or it can cause internal stress, especially if you're open-ended. So I hear this a lot from open-ended people that criticize themselves for waiting to the last minute. But for people who are open-ended, 
that's just how the process really works. So I stopped stressing out about leaving things to the last minute. Instead, I've created space in my calendar so that I hit my deadline, though. I give myself a deadline. Mm -hmm. Because people, people who are open ended and maybe wondering, like, why do I keep procrastinating? Why do I keep putting it off? Stop judging it and just know that this is how you like to process the world and the day to day, the tactics of the day to day. And there's some things to learn about being closed ended. I've learned to really double down on closed endedness because then I get more done and that leaves me more space to go with the flow <laughs> rather than having lists and checking them off. And you can see where this might cause a lot of conflict. So when you, also when you, if you have clients, you may notice clients who are asking you like, when can we do this? Or they're wanting a list or some structure around it rather than going with the flow. I'm thinking about a client I have. She's very detail oriented and very open, uh, very closed ended. So everything is, is she wants a lot of structure and checklists and all of that. Um, so I try to bring more of that to the table. And she wants to up her leadership and get into the next level of her leadership. So that that holds her back a bit from being a big picture thinker. Um, allowing herself to go with the flow a bit and being too robotic and stringent in her day to day. So there's a lot that we can flex here to learn more about ourselves. And again, presence should dictate how I show up, not my style preference. So as an open-ended person, I have to flex to over, overtake the inertia of conditioning and say, okay, it's time to close this out. It's time to do, do my bookkeeping. It's time to create structure for myself so that I can launch an online product. And I just said this again, but I can't stress it um, enough. It's really like the skill is like, let me stop. I know that I have preferences, conditioning to be quiet and an introvert. It's time for me to go to this party. It's time for me to speak at this engagement. And then, it's like, what, how do I need to behave for this situation? What do I need to do also tactically for this situation? That's really the skill. Because here, when we allow our conditioning to be in charge, we usually want it done our way. And meetings can look like this, even when we respect and care about each other. So you're probably... Uh, small business owners, but still you have people you interact with all day, you have clients. So chances are, if you're not meeting each other or we're not, we're not, we don't seem to be in the same cadence, your style preferences may be clashing. And then it's time to say, okay, how am I meeting the moment? And how can I invite the other person to meet the moment? And our internal dialogue can look like this. This is a picture of a team, but this is what our internal dialogue can look like. Our mental chatter um, can take over. Look, our brains are wired for efficiency, not effectiveness. So they want to use as the brain, our brains want to use as little energy as possible. So your brain is going to want to say, go back to, no, no, no. I don't want to use all this energy I want, to, I want to go with what's efficient so my brain can, can reserve energy. Let me do what I'm used to and is grooved in my brain. Let me keep being closed-ended and check the boxes. Let me keep uh, going out and talking to people as an extrovert. So, so our brains are going to want to keep using as little energy as possible and in that, when we're not meeting the moment, we have a tendency to get into this internal argument, if you will. Why can't I do it better? Why can't I just do it the way I want? Why isn't this working? This is the mental chatter that comes up, the internal conflict, if you will, rather than saying, okay, look, I'm an open-ended person or I'm a closed-ended person. You know, Maybe I'm closing this out too early or maybe I'm pushing this client to close something too quickly and they need more information. Or maybe this client is a detailed person and I'm big picture. Maybe I need to give them more detail. All of this requires us to bring more awareness to ourselves, which is fine. And it's, look, it's fun to get to know yourself. And then we get to flex and learn different styles. 
And again, presence dictates what should happen because when we stop and get present, we're able to disrupt patterns and conditioning to really ask. And this is not like, let me get really present. Let me take 30 minutes to get present here. No, it's like, look, what's happening right now? Let me just pause, check out the situation here. Now, how do I need to show up? Okay, this is something where I need to really get on stage and talk a lot. Or, you know what? This person looks like they might need more detail. Any of this. And then also, we can replace the conflict and drama with learning and appreciation. So this is where we can support each other. I just crack up because I've done workshops on this topic, obviously, I've you know, a number of ways. I've done them without diagnostic tools or with diagnostic tools. And I'll, you know, with diagnostic tools, usually there's some type, right? So I divide the room and then we, we just start to talk from our types and people start to say, so that's why she always does that. It's like, it's like without, um, it happens all the time. So that's why he always acts like that. So instead of getting, we can get curious about each other and ourselves and stop judging each other. Why can't they do it more like me is her typical response. So we can, we can really start learning from each other. So when there's someone different than us, we can say, okay, so how can I expand my muscle there? Build stronger muscle about that person's style. What can I learn from them? And then I can learn to flex. So then let's look at another set of uh, preferences here. This is actually from the tilt model is one of my favorite diagnostic tools. But again, notice I'm not bringing any tools in here. Tools are great again, but you don't wanna, you wanna learn how to implement the tools in your day to day. Cause otherwise we take a test. Okay, I'm a introvert, that's it. And also let me say too, you don't wanna label anyone. That's why I'm careful to use the word preferences. Because if we start saying, Abby, you're an introvert, then we get locked into that just like any other label. And then we're not able to see that that person can flex it all. And it's, and it's like, oh, well, she's always going to be an introvert and that's it. Similarly with yourself, you don't want to say, okay, I'm this introvert. I'm this extrovert. I'm detailed. I'm not. It's important to recognize your preferences. So and again, there's no good, bad, or right, wrong here. It's just like, okay, what are my preferences? Where can I flex? This, this uh, framework here has to do with four corners, if you will. So there are people up in the left-hand corner here who like to focus on the who. So they literally like to get people in a room and share ideas. So the behavior is just that. I love, as a, as a person who's a who, a connector, they like to get in a room, who's on Zoom, and he's any Zoom room or regular room, <laughs> and talk and get people together and talk about ideas. There's people with a preference for the why. They like to take ideas and put them in the action into action. That's the behavior. There's people who are interested in the how. <clears throat> they like to take facts and put them into action. These are the uh, roadmap builders. Um, the roadmap builders, the uh, operationalizers, if you will. And then there's people who are interested in the what. They like to get together and talk about facts and learn, and learn about facts. As you can see, no good, bad, right, wrong. But what if we had a group of people and I actually had a board I was coaching, nine out of 10 of them, um, actually, I'm sorry, 18 out of 20 of them, it was a tw that's another issue, but it was a 20 person family consensus board. That's another whole issue. We'll park that. Thank goodness they got along. But 18 out of 20 of them were interested in the who. So they hired me. What do you think they wanted? They had trouble getting anything done because they'd get together. They were, they've all had a preference for the who, people and ideas. They'd get together and talk. Well, it's great, great meeting. Okay, but why aren't we making any progress? So that's where we're back to no good, bad, right, wrong. But people who are interested in the who and have a preference for it, they're gonna be great with people. So they're gonna be great with bringing people together. That's the upside. The downside is that there's a lot of talk 
and no action, lots of connection. Upper right, people with the why. They like to take ideas and put them into action. Yeah, one second. Yeah, Josh, go ahead. Do you have a question? Oh, no, I'm, I was just saying, Emma had to jump off, so it was just- Oh, okay, yeah, 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 no problem. yeah, no problem, okay. So uh, upper right-hand um, corner, people with the why, they like to take an idea and put it into action, which is great because then they're enthusiastic, they have a lot of energy and things move forward. The downside of that is, um, I used to call that the whack-a-mole leader. <laughs> when I was on Wall Street, there was a leader, he would come in every day, like, now we're doing this. Now we're doing that. We were just, okay, you know, it was like whack-a-mole. Or like, think about launching a technology product. Yeah, let's take this idea and put it into action. That's like launching something without any user testing or launching a broken site. So no good, bad, right, wrong. The lower right, the people who are interested in the facts, they like to operationalize things. We need to operationalize things. I talked about that. But that, which is the upside. So things really get done and they get operationalized because so there's a process around them, which is really useful. The downside is, is they can be very robotic. Okay, let me just get this done. Let me put this into a process and that's it. Very process oriented, pluses and minuses. And then finally, back to the lower left again, people with, with a focus on the what. So these people, when they do move forward, they like to do due diligence. So they've reviewed, they've analyzed, et cetera. So when they do move forward, things are pretty smooth then because they've done a lot of due diligence. So that makes for a smooth action. What do you think the downside is? Analysis paralysis. You know, can we look at this one more time? Can we re review the data one more time? So you can think about you know, where am I in this? And then what conditioning um, do I, can I overcome? Or where can I flex a little more in my business or in my relationships? There, where is conflict coming up? Because in this model, the opposites have a tendency to be our weakest point and or our biggest point of contention. So if I was actually coaching someone in the lower right in the hell, and she's like, why do we have to connect at all? Like, it's like, why can't we just get work done? And she means it. And she's just, she's like excited about getting work. Really awesome person, right? Caring person. But she's like, why do we have to chat? Why can't we just get to work, right? And then I was coaching another um, tiny company and eight, nine out of 11 of them were in the what? So they move slowly, right? So they move at a snail space. So I told them eight years ago, you really want to make your website mobile friendly. Like it's where the world's going, make sure you do. So finally, a couple of years ago, after eight, after seven, eight years, they said they finally did. They're like, okay, we see what you mean. We move slow, right? So <laughs> it's again, it's not good, bad, right, wrong, but you can see how our conditioning, any kind of it can get in the way of, I'll say forward momentum and just meeting what's here and being able to flex and have the agility to meet what's here. So again, the skill here is what's happening? What's the situation? What do I need to bring to it? Okay, so if, you're, if it's time for you to uh, Prospect clients, okay, what's happening? Okay, I'm an introvert, got to get out of my box and start prospecting. Okay, if it's time to get out of the details and, and have a vision for your company, where you want to go, it's time to get out of the details. And okay, let me start flexing into big picture thinking. And then also you can recognize, okay, where are my, you know, where can I flex more and where do I need support in that, right? Who can I learn from or what kind of coaching do I need? Or just what book do I need to buy to learn how to flex into details or to learn how to be more outgoing or to learn how to be more close-ended? And so this is your second tech, uh, your second takeaway is simply, where can I flex? And then can I stop judging others and say, okay, so they're not like me. What can I learn from them? and see if there's anything that I can learn from another person or even better appreciate them for what they're bringing. And then when you get really skillful, then you can start to be masterful and say, hey, Abby, 
Um, I know you would like to talk about the big picture, but this is a meeting where we really need to dive into the details of the budget as opposed to get out of there. Why do you keep talking about the big picture? You're awful. That's usually what goes through our head, something like that, even though we're good people. <laughs> And then the benefits, you know, I think, I think I've said this, but basically, you know, reduce conflict and drama. If we can start to understand where we're missing each other, if you're speaking with something, someone and the eyes are rolling in the back of their head, like I look for being a big picture speaker and a thinker, I'm like, okay, I, I stop and ask, am I giving you enough detail? You know, we can be agile human beings and workforce, like especially as entrepreneurs, right? We have to be really agile. One minute we're diving into the details and next minute we're on the phone with clients, right? We really have to have that agility. And we can up our ability to appreciate diversity in not such a radioactive topic. It's a place to start about recognizing diversity because look, if we wanna get into diversity talking about race, that's a radioactive topic. And there, I did do a webinar on, um, uh, unconscious bias. So you can watch that. But this is a great place to start to appreciate diversity without it being such a radioactive topic. So let's just pause here for a moment. Do you have any questions, comments, disagreements, challenges? Hit me. <laughs> Kapow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is this is really great, Abby. I, I find this easy to do when I'm in repeated contact with people. I find this takes longer to do than if I've just got, you know, a quick meeting, I've got the elevator time with them. I'm at a networking event. And there's lots of people, especially in person now to, to gauge that that quickly. Do you need more information, less information? Like, do our styles jive? What do I need to do? So do you have any sort of tips or how to get, yeah. how to hit the road. Yeah, yeah, great. great. <laughs> I remember the road. Thing. Yeah, hit the road, let's hit the road. I love you, love you. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, so the place to start, here's what I did. I first got really, really clear about my own preferences because, because then I don't have to worry about anyone else's. So one, look for the signals. So again, let's, let's use my big picture thinking. I, like, I do like to be at 100,000 feet. So when I'm speaking to people, you know, like I have clients who are very detail oriented. So when I start to lose them, I'll stop and ask, do you need more detail? Right. Whenever, whenever we, so when, when we're talking and we're really connected and we start to go like this, I'm like our style, I just make the assumption my style's clashing. Then I'll ask like, are you following me? Do I need to be clearer? What do I need to say? Or how can I deliver the information? How you want to hear it? Any of these questions, then I don't have to worry about are they, aren't they? So if I start there, that inherently starts to have me recognize where I can flex more. And then it just is like, okay, well, they're talking a lot during this meeting. They're probably, they're likely extroverted and they're likely auditory, auditory processors. So then I'm like, okay, so let me let them process a little more. But, but start here first. And I, do, I'm, I am a big fan of the Myers-Briggs. The, 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 there's two dichotomies that are a bit outdated, but I do like the Myers-Briggs and I do like the Tilt 365 report. It's only $49, it's a true Tilt profile because it, it really gives me rubber, that rubber meets the road, how I like to do things. And then the visual kinesthetic auditory learners, I find that. So if you're talking to someone, like, let's just diet, let's just do it. Why are you, why are you showing me something? Why, why are you speaking? Let's just dive in. My father, my father would, that would drive him nuts because he was visual and, and had to look at the instructions like, dad, just give me the stuff. I'll put it together. He's like, you're like a wild person. So let me stop there and see if I answered your question or if you have any other follow up. Follow up. No, that's, that, that's good. I think just just asking, just asking the question. <laughs> yeah, right. Duh. Uh. Well, we always try, and that's we try to be mind readers. Look, something's happening with Abby. She doesn't seem to be paying attention. What's going on? Am I giving you? You know, are you bored? Am I giving you something in the right way? Should I give be giving this to you in a different way? Like, get rid of the. We're not mind readers, right? So, and I'm. It just amazes me how uh, the the extent at which 
we just miss each other. I mean, CEOs down to college grads to husband, wife, you know, partners, I don't care, you know, it's just how we relate. We all have different style preferences. And it's like, okay, so where do we meet? Where do we not? And how can we learn from each other? What, else, what other questions, comments, thoughts? I'll just add that I love, I love that, Abby, that you're really just like taking ownership of, of who mm -hmm. you are in the interaction. And not making any of that bad, mm. right? Right. So like, uh, look, I was, I was on Wall Street for 20 years in sales leadership among, amongst a whole bunch of roles, but you know, Wall Street's a very extroverted sales, sales, you know, financial advisors, it's a very extroverted world. So when I got out of college, I'm like, why am I my energy, man? This is, this is just like, I'm exhausted. I, I finally was like, look, okay, I'm an introvert. You know, I have a preference for introvert. It's really, really strong. So, so I just started to learn to manage my energy. So yeah, I'd go to boondoggles. I'd have one drink. And I'm like, you know me, introvert, gotta go to bed. And people started to understand that instead of being, why are you so quiet? Or because in the absence of sharing our sharing ourselves and allowing allowing ourselves to be seen, people will make up stories. Why is she so quiet? She's filtering. She's politic, right? She's politicking. We don't sit, we don't <laughs> we don't sit there and make up the story. Oh, she's being quiet because she wants to be really thoughtful in her response. Like we just we don't our minds do not work that way. I also yeah. really I loved. You're talking about closed ended and open ended. Yeah. I've only ever heard that in in uh, framing a question. Is your question open ended or closed ended? I've only ever heard it in that in that way. So to think about, I have a preference for for open ended, and I often get accused of you know like you said procrastinating, and it's like no, I that's my preference is to do that. So I've got a better way now of of keeping that in my noggin and, and be able to express that. Like, that's my preference and I meet my deadlines. So what's it to you? <laughs> <laughs> you might want to work on the what's it to you. But, you know, if you really want to double down on that, you can throw a finger at them, right? And be like, so, well, no. you know, I don't. I'm just, I appreciate your lightheartedness here. But, but I, and I do like, yeah, right? So close and people are going to be like, what? You haven't started that. And that's like, it's none of your business. Our deadline is Friday at noon. So that's where on the, that, the open and close and it causes a lot of stress between people, mm -hmm. right? Like my parents, they used to go on vacation with this other couple. They were really great for some, but they used to do an agenda down to the minute. All four of them were close ended. So they would have an agenda for their vacation like down to the eight o'clock pick up Kathy car for the, the airport ride, you know, like I'm just, that just makes me cringe. Right. But I appreciate, I was like, look, you know, there's a little bit of space for open endedness there, but Hey, all four of them and they love their vacations. Right. I would, I would need more freedom to go with the flow and decided what I wanted to do, but you're right. We get into, we start um, getting into conflict, especially when we like, and when we like each other. Well, sometimes people just aren't flexible enough to make that change and they don't realize, you know, that flexibility is an important part of interaction with your surroundings, people and, you know, what happens if you can't go, quote unquote, go with the flow, it's, you know, it causes you more problems than it causes other people. Because you're yes. just, you just go, okay, stop stick to your guideline and I'm going to go off and have fun. And it's like, well, why don't you want to be a part of this? You know? So, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Yes. And to that. So see, right. So this is where we get into the conflict of it. Uh, you know, maybe 50 years, that would be okay to, for me in this day and age, we have to be, we have to flex. Think about mm -hmm. it. If, if we, with pandemics, you know, supply chain issues, you know, infl inflation and everything, we really have to flex in a modern world. The world is just a different place now. Mm -hmm. Well, people are, are so sensitive to, oh, I'm wrong. And one of the things that I've had to address 
in a lot of circumstances is the fact that there's no right, there's no wrong. It's where you are right now. And the question is, where do you want to be? If this is not working for you, what are you willing to do to make the change? And, you know, you've got to answer those questions first before you can start in another direction. You know, it, you can't change the world, but you can change yourself. And that's the only thing you have control of. Exactly. So, yeah. Do that. Plus one to that. Yes, and Like, I couldn't have said that better myself. That's right. And, and we judge ourselves, right? And then also we can get stuck. Because if we can't learn to, to be agile and flex more muscle, that mm -hmm. might keep us stuck in changing anything for the better. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, just, and, and conditioning, conditioning is tough, right? Go ahead. What were you going to say? Mm -hmm. Well, you've got to get to that point where you're just tired of being who you are and it's time to learn who you've become. And that's the, that's the one thing I have been working on recently taken me a while uh, to make that huge adjustment because you know and I have a question for you though along that line can <laughs> you one time half and half like I, as you were talking I thought okay I'm changing my resume here's what it's going to say you know I know that I'm detail oriented I mean detail you know oriented but I'm also big picture oriented so I like the details, but I always see the big picture. With the details, I can figure out where, how people are seeing the big picture. But if you can't get details from them, then you have to figure out, you know, an, another way. And it, it, it's just amazing um, because I'm execution proficient, but I'm also close-ended. You know, and it's like, I seem to be an anomaly to a lot of people. And I said, look, I use both sides of my brain at the same time. I am so sorry. That's the way God made me. That's what I have to deal with. You should live inside this. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's hard on you? Try doing it. This. <laughs> but um, unless the thing, I like to try to bring a lighthearted view in to everything people are just way too serious for their own good sometimes amen amen one more time if we can't you know things are serious but when we can't hold ourselves lightly that's a whole other thing but when we can't hold ourselves lightly then we typically go into drama but you know that's a, that's almost a golden rule that if i'm taking myself too seriously then i can't reflect on myself in a light-hearted way to learn right learning comes from light-heartedness Oh, and, and, and let's go back to what you were saying, you know, and writing that sentence on your resume. So th that's the perfect example of like, look, I can dive into the details, but I can also go to the big picture. That's a perfect example of being able to flex. So, and most people, look, we, we don't teach people how we like to process things. We, we teach a lot about what we do and I, we need to continue to do that. But we don't actually sit down and say, how do you like to process the world? How are your preferences? So most people are stuck in their conditioning. And then we get into like, there she goes with the big picture again, or why are we diving into the details again? Instead of like, look, Abby, this is one of those meetings where we really need to dive into the details. Oh, thank you. Okay. Let me bring my attention and look at these line items, right? It's, that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. So the more that you can, and, 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 um, and Claire, back to your question, that's what I just focus on. What do I know my preferences are? And then what's being required of me now? And then if you want to get even more skillful, it's like, okay, forget about my preferences and any other preferences. What is here and how do we need to behave? And now no one's behaving this way. Hey, you guys, it's really time for us to launch this and look at the details. I know we like to talk about in the clouds and ideas, but this thing really needs to launch because it's necessary for our company. So what else? What other comments? I'm going to give Josh a few. We have a, time for one more question and I'll turn it back to Josh to close it out. You know, I, I, let, let me say a few comments here. You got, you know, I'm, as you can see, the rubber meets the road. 
navigating the human condition in this day and age requires skill uh, on multiple levels, presence, emotional intelligence, style differences, listening, speaking, all of these are behavioral skills that the opportunity for us is to start really, my, I have a book that's like a handbook and how it's like a, almost like a car manual, but it's, 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 but it's for your behavior. So chapter 15 in my book talks about this. I have a blog on my website called, oh, so that's why they do that. So you can check it out there. I have an online course on consciousleadership.online. We got to commit to online growth and learning. And then I have courses on um, Shiftco also. So Shiftco is an awesome platform to get into a community. And you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Venmo. So now I just want to, here, let me stop sharing and turn it back to, there we go. So let me turn it back to Josh here. Well, thank you, Abby. That was actually awesome. Really <laughs> informative. It makes a lot of sense why you might not be effective in certain areas in your leadership. You might be doing everything right, but not be taking into account someone else's preferences, which is all about being conscious, right? Being conscious, being present in the moment with yourself and with others so that you can make the impact you want to make in the world and, and make the difference you want to make, grow businesses and just help people in general. So Abby, thank you so much for sharing. Um, you can connect with Abby at Abigail Station on LinkedIn. And again, her website, consciousleadership.online. Uh, please, you'll get um, follow-up emails after this regarding the Shift Code events. You can find us at shiftco.global where you can learn about all of our upcoming events and our, we are offering a lot of free webinar series um, to help develop your leadership and your business. And we're also starting to offer in-person events as well in your local hub city. So we are, um, we're in most major American cities in the United States. We're also in a few international countries. So we are growing rapidly. If you know anyone um, that'd be a great member, please connect them to us. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out on our website about membership and uh, the benefits that, that come with being a member. That's all we have for you uh, today. If you have any questions on Shiftco, we have uh, four minutes left for the hour. We'd be happy to take that, those questions now. Did you have the live event in New York last week? We have one tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Oh! So if you're in the New York area, <laughs> um, we have a live networking event tomorrow. Um, it's our first one since the pandemic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Shift so, goes back live now, which is really exciting. That'll be fun. That'll be really fun. Yeah. Uh, Josh, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Actually, for, is, actually it's for Abby. Um, this is being recorded, but is there a possibility of getting um, uh, the presentation that you gave us um, so that I can practice? <laughs> As yeah, such. yeah, for sure. You can. So this is being recorded. It'll go to the YouTube. It'll go to the. You can go to the Shiftco YouTube site. So if you go right. to YouTube, just do Shift slash Co. Just search Shift slash Co. Okay. And all of this will be up there. Like I think it takes you know maybe 24, 48 hours. They put it up pretty quickly. Some you know just uh -huh. and then uh, you know feel free to email me with any questions also. I'm at Abby, A-B-B-Y, at abigailstason.com. Okay. You can find me on LinkedIn at Abigail Stason. Feel free to link up with me and send me a message that way. I'm Abigail Stason. Just go ahead and get us connected on LinkedIn and ask me anything there. And I can remind you about Shiftco on YouTube or, and, and that's okay. You'll see that um, there's past, like my past recordings are up there. And then there's a whole lot of, webinars that Shiftco does on a ton of topics. So I highly recommend you take advantage of the Shiftco YouTube channel. <clears throat> Where you can see mine about using photography to grow your business. Yeah, there you go. Right. So, so there's a whole <laughs> lot, right? There you go. So shameless her, her, plug. Yeah, shameless no, don't be shameless. Right. So there's a lot of info out there um, uh, from other entrepreneurs. So if you need some services, also, so Shift is a great uh, platform, in my opinion. I enjoy being a member and um, connecting with other members. But feel free yeah. to reach out to me directly at any time. Josh, go. And yeah, Patricia, if you're if you're looking at Shift Co, it is a platform. It's two parts. It's a platform that offers coaching and training 
So there's um, all different modules on how to start a business, grow a business, um, get clear on marketing, advertising, even conscious selling. So there's a platform that has all the modules recorded that you can watch. And there's also the community where you connect with other members. You do um, basically modules together, either live or recorded. And then there's various levels of events online and in person. And then through the community, you get to grow your network as well as your business. Wonderful. Well, Abby, thank you so much for a great uh, conscious leadership series again. Uh, thank you for everyone for, for joining. And this is Shifko. We are signing out and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Good to see you.